Children born into cults and left. What was your oh, sh moment? Like others, my experience maybe wouldn't be categorized as a true cult, but the whole thing like the herd and don't question God's plan really made me feel like it. It was a fairly mainstream religion, but so robotic and hypocritical I'd still consider a fricked up way to be. The things that started it for me was a teacher, at the private school run by the church, insisting, rather cruelly, that my pets can't go to heaven because they have no souls. I was 6 and felt like it was just a heartless thing to do. Also, the sexism. This was reflected in the dress code policy. The whole idea that girls carry the responsibility to be wholesome and not tempting in any way. By wearing long skirts, no sleeveless shirts, etc. Also, the teachers saying mean and hurtful things to students, body shaming. Before it was ever called that, a thin built girl for being too skinny, making fun of the poor kids for being less well kempt than the other students, bad mouthing students publicly, humiliating corporal punishment. I have no idea where the religious messages of Jesus' love fit in there because I sure didn't hear it much. Only the abuse from the pious staff. It's based on Revelation 13:16. I had ventured onto the internet and googled the Seventh Day Adventist Church. I saw that one of the search suggestions included the word cult and it went on from there. It was eye opening and comforting to know that my doubts could be validated. My parents church does not recognize divorce. Ever. You marry once. And that's it. Remarriage is living in adultery and is no different than sleeping around. A man joined the church who was happily married with two young children. Except she was his second wife. The church elders actually convinced this guy to leave his wife because she wasn't his true wife. Just torpedoed that family to heck. Frick that bulls. WWCG here. They had said people who follow all the rules in the bible, but weren't members of that particular church, would still go to heck. There were plenty other WTF teachings, but that's the one that really made me call BS. There was no one particular moment, it was a slow process of seeing through all the lies, and learning to form my own opinions through critical thinking, rather than just accepting things I was always told. I do remember one particular moment though, I was drinking with some friends, and started to feel guilty because I thought I was sinning, and then I decided that I was miserable enough of the time, and I might as well just enjoy this moment, so I did. This is so important. I left for the same reason. I felt so much guilt for the stupidest crap. Finally I realized that even if that guilt went away I would be happy where I was. So I stopped feeling guilty and started living for myself. Not really a cult but I grew up in a Muslim country and family. My family wasn't really that religious but the people around us were. When I was in high school, our biology teacher refused to teach us about evolution because she knew that we and every living thing were created just like this. After that, I did some research about it and it really made sense. I lost many friends because of it, but the ones who decided to search the truth with me are now my friends forever. I grew up in an evangelical Christian household where both parents were devoted prayer warriors. For those not familiar with the term, a prayer warrior is an individual who is committed to praying for others and we would go to church 4-5 times out of the week to do so. My oh crap moment was when we passed by a family in their broken down car on the side of the road and my parents told us to pray. I asked shouldn't we help them and my mother said we are. We are helping them by praying to God for someone to help. I was 8. I am no longer religious and I stop to help people stranded on the side of the road whenever I can because it's the right thing to do. When my girlfriend was forced to confess in front of the congregation for causing the fall into sin of the guy who molested and raped her and then marry him because he was called to preach. No idea where they went. I've looked. Her father was the assistant pastor and put a gun to me to get me away from her. I was a teenager. The deacons weren't fans of mine neither to say in the least. This makes my blood boil. People hide so much cruelty under the guise of religion. It's baffling. As a child, I was once taken to a religious demigod or something. I was standing on the queue waiting for my turn, since my mother forced it upon me. The person cured a person sitting on a wheelchair right in front of me. It looked very well scripted, and it was my turn to follow up. I was experiencing anxiety issues and naturally, my mother was worried. The person told me some generic stuff at first, 
but I was a naive child and I went on to ask specific questions like, if you really know my past, tell me what scares me the most and stuff. He answered a few stuff a normal child would, like needles, but I wasn't afraid of it. I pointed it out quite clearly, and he became red in front of so many people. My mother then told me to shut up, but I quite enjoyed it. I was raised a Jehovah's Witness. My oh crap moment was probably meeting my gay co-worker John. John absolutely terrified me because of how I was taught to think of gays. But John was cool. John had a husband and a kid, and he seemed like a really good dad. John was super nice and helped train me at my job. He was fantastic. I was so freaked out being so near a gay person but all I could think about was what's the big deal? That was a big wake up call. It started me on my path of not buying into the homophobic bulls. I think it was enough to start my critical thinking journey. Meeting John was in 2008. I stopped attending meetings in 2014. And I've been battling the brainwashing ever since. It's crazy how deep the indoctrination goes but I'm feeling better and more confident than ever. I did end up losing 99% of my friends and family so I'm slowly trying to rebuild that as well. It sucks but it's better than living a life for sure. I just had my oh crap moment a few months ago. I've been an atheist don't really care for my entire adult life, but I was raised in an ashram. My parents were incredibly involved in the ashram and completely looked up to the guru. My father passed away a few years ago, but my mother is still just as involved, donating money, doing the practices. Now at 72 as she was when she joined at 28, even though I stepped away from the ashram, I always thought they were fine and made my mother happy, so to each their own. Then, a few months ago my mother tells me she needs to get something off her chest. Apparently, the right hand man of the guru raped her and that's my real father. She says she never told anyone because she wanted a baby so badly that the guru made this happen just so she could have a baby, since the man that raised me couldn't get her pregnant. It was both infuriating and incredibly heartbreaking to hear her put so much faith into her beliefs in this manner. To realize that she was so brainwashed. To not only not ask for help at the time, but to see this as some sort of gift. After she told me this I reached out to a swami that used to be a big part of the ashram. I honestly don't know what I was expecting, but the man that raised me is dead, and my apparent real father mother's rapist is also dead, and my mother refused to talk to me about it anymore because I was so upset. The swami basically mirrored what my mother said, if that's what happened it was for the best. The guru is all known blah blah blah. People need to be held responsible for their actions. You can't explain away a rape in this manner. I understand that it was a different time, and there could have been other things keeping my mom from speaking up, but her main reason for why she didn't was because she truly believed that on a spiritual level the guru wouldn't allow something to happen within the ashram that wasn't supposed to. I don't even know what to do with this information, but mostly I feel incredibly sad for my mom. I'm late but I figure I'll post it anyways. My biggest oh crap moment was when my parents found out that I had masturbated. I was forced to meet in a room with our bishop who was basically an old man. He asked me anything from what pee did I watch, and what was depicted, to how long it took for me to have an orgasm. I was freaked the heck out, and I've still been forced into these interviews since then. Also when my parents forced me to donate 10% of all the money I made to the church as well. Thankfully I'll be moving out next month was living with a girl in a flat chair for a while. We took in her good friend, a Turkish girl who left home because of her tyrant father. It escalated when he slapped her one day for being a rebel. Well, not a rebel in the traditional sense. She was exceptionally good in school and very clever, polite and pretty. Everything started going downhill in her family when she told her parents that she doesn't believe in their faith. She never wore a hood scarf, so the family must have been little more progressive and rejects the conservative culture in general. She told them she wants to have a career, travel the world, etc. The dad obviously had other plans that included an arranged marriage. Once she lived with us, the harassment started. Angry messages on our answering machine. Plants broken. Car door keyed and visits and encounters with the larger family that included an angry younger brother that threatened us repeatedly with physical violence. We had no evidence for the broken stuff. But one day when the family was frantically knocking on our door demanding to take her home we recorded it and called the police. 
The father told the police we kidnapped her to pimp her out, but the police got a pretty good understanding what was going on. They had a serious word with the family. We never pursued further action, such as pressing charges, as it was already a stressful situation for the girl. Luckily the harassment stopped and her mom even came to apologize with clothes and food. Last thing I know she moved to her aunt's place who was a modern woman teaching at an university and who got estranged from the family as well. I really hope she could follow her dreams and leave crazy family behind her. Drifted away from the grips of the cult and my family for years and got isolated by everyone I grew up with and had a very difficult time making new friends. One day I just decided I'd cut ties entirely. Wasn't till then I really started investigating the background and origins of my fundamentalist Christian upbringing and that it in fact was a high control group and a cult. Finally all the abuse I've seen growing up and all the mental health issues of everyone around me made sense. All the backwards conditioning I've been fed since I was old enough to understand my parents suddenly was uncovered in the light of sensible morals and ethics. I will never forget the day I visited my family for the last time to declare that I was not gonna be a part of their way of life and make a stand against their beliefs. My stepdad flat out dropped his cutlery on his dinner plate in shock. My mom started crying. My brother walked out of the room without a word and hasn't spoken to me since. I recorded the audio of that moment and I still listen to it sometimes. And even though it hurts I'm reaffirmed every time that I made the right choice. Step 1. Put the audio on YouTube. Step 2. Profit. No seriously release the audio. Back in the late 90s some friends co-workers of mine were involved with a local church that bordered on cult status. They kept trying to get me to go to one of their services with them, talking about how great the sermons were, how the community within He Birch was very welcoming, etc. I was agnostic at the time and skeptical because of a few things they also told me but I went to check it out myself. At first everything seemed like any other church friendly people, charismatic pastor, singing, praying, etc. But then I noticed things were weird when the pastor started speaking in tongues and the entire congregation did as well on cue. This happened at least three times during the service and each time, everyone in the church besides me joined in. The church also encouraged all but forced young members to join their religion school to receive a degree in faith. The school was pretty expensive, around $2000 in 1997 or about $3,100 today, which caused most members to take out a loan from the church to pay for. Members in their early 20s were not allowed to date or fraternize in any way with the opposite sex while in school. The church even rented out multiple apartments in a local complex where students were housed together. Non-members were not allowed to rent rooms, or be in the apartment without a chaperone. I think what bothered me most was how intrusive the church was in these young people's lives. They required the members to report their incomes, demanded tithes, and regulated every aspect of the members' lives. The first Sunday when the time to go to the Kingdom Hall came and went, I asked my dad what was going on, and he said we're not going anymore. It was one of the best moments of my life. I felt both relieved and excited. I had always been bullied because I was so unworldly and shy, and although leaving the JWs didn't end the bullying, I was finally able to be a part of the outside world, which was wonderful. Before we left my parents were very strict. We didn't celebrate Christmas, Easter or birthdays. I wasn't allowed to go to other kids parties either. When I was very small a member of the congregation told me that Jehovah could hear and see all of my thoughts and would know if I had any bad thoughts. I wasn't allowed to listen to pop music or watch any TV shows or films that could be considered a bad influence. Example. The night on Bald Mountain sequence from Fantasia, because it had demons in it. When the matriarch of the family passed, my paternal grandmother, the whole family stopped being witnesses. Our first Christmas was amazing. Things like a Christmas tree, decorations and presents were a huge novelty. My parents went and bought so many tree decorations that you couldn't see the tree under them. I felt like an alien experiencing another culture for the first time. I'm from Mexico. I was raised Catholic, during my first communion, going to mass almost every Sunday, however, the first time I saw a very poor old lady giving $300 pesos, about 15 US dollars and keep in mind this is a lot of money for a poor person in Mexico, 
to the church just to see the preacher spend that money on luxury. I had been to that preacher's house and it was very luxurious. I was done with it. Never trusting any sort of religion again. None of them. The way the mess with the people that honestly believe in them is not correct. I wonder how many SS checks the 700 club and similar get on a regular basis from elderly folks who really can't afford to give anything. I grew up in the Pentecostal church. They're the ones that speak in tongues. Women must dress modestly, etc. I didn't have an oh crap moment but more of a slow realization over time. It took a while to realize all the crap I was brainwashed into. And I'm still unpacking and sorting that baggage today. It's been 3 years since I left. And for the first time in my life, I'm starting to truly love myself. Growing up in a cult that says you will never be good enough can do a lot of damage to a kid's self esteem. I will always have emotional scarring from growing up in that environment but it's starting to heal over time. BTW, if you have questions about growing up in a Pentecostal church, AMA. A Obligatory not a cult, but close. My family is uber Catholic, like. My dad got shipped off to seminary boarding school instead of regular high school and was sexually abused by a Catholic priest Catholic. But anyway, my oh crap moment was one Sunday at church when I was in college. The priest was a major misogynist and kept going on and on about how women shouldn't be in the military because a woman's role in her family is to be nurturing and it's the man's duty to be the protector so only men should be the protectors of our country and yada yada yada. I realized that crap wasn't for me at all and pretty much stopped going to church then and there. The moment when I asked myself, what, fundamentally, the difference between my church and North Korea was, my thoughts went something like this. We sing songs about allegiance to the supreme leader. We have pictures of supreme leader in our house. We ascribe supernatural events to supreme leader. Supreme leader can do no wrong. One day, we will invade false Korea Jesus will come and kill all our enemies. Sometime soon, as of last century week, leaving church best Korea, where will you go? Horrible things outside. People who leave best Korea are evil traitors. Take extra time out of your day to serve best Korea the church. Anyway, I highly recommend this as a thought process as to whether or not a part of religion is bad if via substituting nouns it sounds like something out of North Korea. Or from a true external perspective. Hard to do. It seems strange. It probably is. But that's how I left. Incidentally I've had run-ins with Mormons from time to time. I stole stuff I liked from them until I realized that I was basically building Baha'i again. So I am mostly aligned with Baha'i now. But more heavily Zoroastrian. I suppose. Despise rituals. But that's my story. I grew up in a Pentecostal church. I had already left but I didn't realize how freaked up it was until the Bush 2 torture memos came out and I was like, gee that sounds like summer camp. Was raised in a super Turkish nationalistic household. My biggest dream was to become a soldier and die fighting for my country when I was in high school. I loved ancient Turkic culture, because modern day Turkish culture comes directly from the ancient Turkic people. I would adopt their symbology etc. Kinda like how the Nazis adopted ancient Germanic rune symbols. It was a sign of nationalism. My oh crap moment came in the first year of university, where I got to meet people that come from the original Turkic homeland of Central Asia. I realized how different they look to Turkey Turks. There was a world of difference. After researching it more, I realized that our blood is totally different. The ancient Turks just conquered and spread their language and culture to Anatolia. But bloodies we are totally different. I was so proud of having pure Turkic blood but turns out it's not. My nationalism crumbled. When I did the math, specifically on things like Armageddon and how many people would die, and the biblical Noah flood, both of which are taken absolutely, positively dead literally. I was listening to a podcast today, the last podcast on the left, in which they were explaining that most cults are based around Armageddon. It was really interesting to me how someone can get so many people behind their religious belief based off the unpredictable end of times. For me, it kind of built up over the years. From my imam telling me that Israel was the root of all evil, and then talking about martyrs would live with Allah forever if they fought in his name. That was the start of it, but the final straw that broke the camel's back, no pun intended, 
was when I really began reading about Muhammad and learned some things that we were never taught at the mosque. Things about how he took slaves, supported slavery, killed boys from rival villages if they had grown a sprout or pubes and his pedophilic proclivities with his child bride. It just became too much. Oh, and I also got death threats when I left. Fun times. I grew up Church of Christ. Not quite a cult, but close. A couple of things that made me raise my eyebrows is when the preacher said evolution is a rumor started by Satan. Another time eight elders gathered in a circle around a missionary going off to Africa, and they all put their hands out and touched him as they said a prayer because of their elder powers I guess. I looked around like is anyone else seeing this crap? Wasn't in a cult, but my moment was when our pastor said and I quote, we need to take back Jerusalem even if it means war. My family and I dipped soon after that as he constantly stayed on that topic. I grew up in the church with no name. For me the moment was finding a website my cousin had told me was spreading lies about us. It turned out to be a history of the church and very informative. Back then the internet represented freedom. My neighbor was a JW. She left at 20 when her husband struck her. Divorce was an automatic excommunication. She went to her parents house, told them she loved them, but he would kill her if she stayed. Her parents gave her the money to leave the state and she was gone by morning. Thankfully she was allowed some education, and her job sector is always hiring. She said she was tipped off that it wasn't right when she heard all her classmates talking about birthday parties. She had her first birthday party on her 25th birthday. My husband wasn't raised in a cult. But his church started turning culty in his late teens. He was a youth group leader, went to church every week, did all the extracurricular stuff. Whenever someone was in need they'd do extra collections and food runs. Then the minister passed away and his son took up leadership, started following a mega church, convinced the congregation that the savings they had put aside for a new church building would be better spent buying the minister and his family a house. My husband had some serious health issues. And almost the entire congregation ghosted the family. By the time my husband was well enough to return the rest of his family had taken the hint and told him not to bother returning. I was born into Scientology. My oh crap moment didn't happen until my whole family left the cult together. Forcing me to leave as well. Originally to my dismay. My mom was asking me practice questions for an upcoming interview with a newspaper and she asked at what point did you realize that you were suffering basic human rights abuses I thought about it for a second and my world changed. Suddenly, everything clicked into place for why I had this gut feeling that I shouldn't go back to the cult even though I didn't have clear reasons. It was especially powerful for me because Scientology claims to be fighting for human rights across the globe and yet they use torture tactics on their own staff like sleep deprivation, isolation, and food deprivation. All of this puts you in a foggy, stressed out state and makes you easy to control. I'm so thankful my family left as a group. Not everyone is that lucky. It was more of a crap ton of unanswered questions about the church over time, until they all came crashing down and shattered my life as I knew it. The denouement was an 80 page thesis called the says letter. It's been heck. I don't know that I ever fully bought into the cult, so I didn't really ever have a singular oh crap moment. A few things. 1. I was raped when I was 5. I was essentially told that it was all in my head, and was shamed for thinking such things. The abuse continued off and on for almost a decade. 2. As I got older, I never got it. I thought this was a byproduct of being bad, because, you know, sex equals bad. And I didn't understand rape, it had to be happening to me because I invited wanted it whatever. 3. My own father informed me that he couldn't listen or respect what I said because my toenails were painted, a natural color because I had some kind of skin issue growing up and my toenails were awful. A friend at my high school bought me some nail polish to cover them up because I was so ashamed of them. For watching a woman get absolutely ostracized and forbidden from taking part in any church services or communions because she left her husband, he was beating the crap out of her. He continued to be welcomed with open arms. He was the victim of course. 5. My parents inviting a known rapist onto their property for a yearly cult gathering. The man had been encouraged not to attend cult gatherings in his home state because what he'd done was so widespread and had become public knowledge. 6. Going back to visit my home state for a cult gathering and seeing my rapist. 
happy as a clam, getting all kinds of sympathy because his worldly wife had left him and taken the kids. Meanwhile, I was all but shunned because I dared to trim my hair and wear mascara. Raised the Jehovah's Witness. Biggest toe crap came long after I woke up and started researching the history of the religion, only to find that the religion had predicted the end of the world several times, pre-1900, in 1914, and most notably in 1975. The reason I went oh crap was because I was never told any of this growing up. I was taught to believe the world will end any day now, but JWs will either try to sugarcoat or flat out deny ever having predicted a specific date, since. As they often proudly tote, only God knows the day and the hour, never you mind those pesky false predictions. I didn't grow up in a cult but my older grandparents told me be not yoked together with an unbeliever meant do not marry outside of your race. These are the same people who continuously scolded me for talking black. Looking back it was a whole long series of moments. Nowhere near as bad as anything anyone else has put out here though. When I thought about it like this. If the world is going to end and God can save people, then God is like a guy on a lifeboat that could give immediate help to those drowning in water. But he says, nope, not until I make sure that you're going to follow my rules. Even then if you frick up, back into the water with you. I've known humans who have much greater kindness. Does that mean that humans are better than God? Left Jehovah's Witnesses 4 months later. I wouldn't say I was involved or born into a cult. But I was very heavily involved in the church from a young age, including a Christian private school. All my friends and family belonged to the church, etc. Around 17-18 I was figuring out I was gay. After a couple years praying and trying my hardest to be straight, I realized that's just the way I was. This one night youth group service I went to had a guest speaker. It was a guy claiming to have been converted from gay to straight and how Jesus saved him and how terrible and sinful his life was until he found God. I remember going up to be prayed for and people falling from the Holy Ghost and speaking in tongues and how I refused to fake that happening to me and letting it happen authentically. It never did and it never had in the past. I just remember thinking how full of crap this guy was and how I didn't want to be a part of any of it anymore. That was the last time I ever went to church. I was born into the Jehovah's Witnesses and I had a couple such moments. The first being when I was very young and in the hospital and my parents were telling the doctor that I couldn't get a blood transfusion even if I were literally bleeding to death. The one that made me leave mentally was when I was molested. The elders basically told me to stop being such a bad and willful child and that if I was more obedient Jehovah would have protected me. I decided then that the paradise earth they promise wouldn't be much of a paradise if one has stuck with those awful people forever. I was told for years that we has the one true truth of all religions. And nothing could destroy it. I was going on a mission to preach the good word to the world and figured I needed to know all the arguments against my religion so that I would be better equipped to counter them with the truth and educate some folks. Well, one trip to Google and a few choice search terms later. When I saw how many people bragged that they voted a certain way, the way they voted was rather opposite of everything they claimed to believe in. I decided I didn't want to be associated with them, and took their symbol off the back of my car. That was a gateway to a lot of other things. This was just 1.5 years ago. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.